iPhone has a basic calendar which will allow you to manage your schedule and set reminders. Tapping on the calendar icon will launch the calendar. From this screen you have three views. As shown here, we're currently on list view. You also have the option for day and month view. Tapping on a day will select it. You can tap on the plus icon in the top right hand corner to add an event to that day. First thing you'll want to do is assign a title and location to the event. Here I'm giving it the name Meeting and the location Baltimore. Press Done to return to the event editor. The next thing you'll need to do is assign a start and end time. From this screen, set the preferences to your event. You can use the wheel at the bottom to assist you with these changes. Again, press Done to return to the event editor. With iPhone's calendar, you have the ability to repeat events. Tap this icon to view your options. Here I'll repeat the event every week. As shown here, you can choose a specific date to end the recurrence of the event. Tapping on the alert option will provide you with different alert schedules. Selecting this, I will add an alert one day before. Once a first alert is set, you have the ability to add a second alert. Here I'm setting a second alert for one hour before. Finally, you can also create a note corresponding with this event. Here I'm noting that this is a brunch meeting. Tap Done to save the event and this will return you to your calendar. Tapping on the arrows on the top of the calendar will allow you to scroll through sequential months. Tapping the Today button will return you to the current date. If you have any events saved for the date you have selected, they will be displayed here. Tapping on it will launch the event info card. Tapping this button gives you the ability to edit the event. From here, you can change any information that you had previously entered, or you can delete the event by tapping here. This gives you the option to delete this event only, or delete all future events if the event repeats. Here I'll delete only this event. As you can see here, the event still exists for the future weeks. Tapping on the calendar icon in the top left hand corner will display a list of all calendars on the device with additional options for each. You're able to find more information pertaining to your device in the About section of the Settings menu. To access this, open your Settings menu and select General. On this page, right at the top, is About. In this section you'll find information including device capacity, available memory, software version, model number, serial number, and more. iPhone gives you several settings that allow for customization of your device. Here I'll show you where to find commonly used settings that we haven't covered yet. The first setting I'll cover is Phone. At the top you can find your cell phone number. Below that, you have the ability to enable or disable FaceTime. Disabling this removes it from your in-call options. Here you can also find settings for call forwarding and call waiting, and international assist, which will automatically add the correct prefix when dialing US numbers from abroad. In this menu, you're also able to change your voicemail password. 
Returning to the settings menu, here are the options for Safari. Here you can change your default search engine and you can also find the options to clear your history, cookies, and cache. Now we'll take you to the Messages settings. Here you can enable or disable different settings for text messages, such as Show Message Preview, Repeat Alerts, Group Messaging, and Character Count. Next, opening the General Settings, you can find the Keyboard options. Here you can turn on or off Auto Capitalization and Correction, Spell Check, Enable Caps Lock, and the spacebar double tap to insert period shortcut. Here you can also change the language of your keyboard, however this can also be found under the international settings that we will cover shortly. Out of the box your device will automatically sync the date and time with your local cellular network. If you need to specifically set a date and time, open the settings menu, select general, and select date and time. From this menu you can switch between 12 and 24 hour time, or have the phone set the date and time automatically as it does by default. Turning off the latter option, settings immediately appear to select a time zone which you can search for here and to manually set the date and time. The phone comes preloaded with different language packs. If you want to change any of the languages, open the general settings menu and select the international option. Here you can change the language of displayed text. Tapping on the option, a list of available languages appear. You also have the ability to change the language for voice controls. Again, tapping on the option will display a list of available languages. Tapping on keyboards, you're able to view the current keyboard language you are using and also have the ability to add additional keyboards with different languages. Changing the region format will alter how the date, time, and phone numbers are displayed. The last option is for the calendar format. Here you can change it between Gregorian, Japanese, and Buddhist. By now you have a lot of personal information on your phone and you may want to pass code protect it. Opening the General Settings menu, you can select Passcode Lock. Turning the option on, you are prompted to enter a 4-digit passcode. If you want a passcode with more than 4 digits, disable Simple Passcode on the previous screen prior to setup. After you enter your passcode, you're prompted to enter it again for confirmation. Once a passcode is set, you have the option to change it by tapping here. You can also change how quickly the passcode is required after placing the phone in standby. Here's the option for simple passcode that we mentioned earlier. At the bottom of the page, you also have the option to have the phone erase all data upon 10 incorrect passcode attempts. Once you have the passcode set up the way you want it, the phone will lock itself after the wait period you designated. Since I selected immediately, iPhone will automatically lock once it's in standby. When I tap the power lock button to wake the phone up, it will prompt me for my passcode prior to access. After you've entered your passcode, as long as it's correct, the phone will unlock.
If you purchased the iPhone for a child, employee, or simply do not want access to certain features on the device, you can restrict certain applications by selecting the Restrictions option under the General Settings menu. When you enable restrictions, iPhone will prompt you for a four-digit restriction passcode. Enter and confirm the passcode, and now you can customize which applications and features are accessible. Once set, you can restrict applications, just as I'm restricting Safari here. You can also restrict content based on ratings for games and media. Since I restricted Safari, the iPhone automatically removes the icon for the application, as shown here. If you decide you want to unrestrict the application or feature, return back to the Restrictions menu, enter your passcode, and enable the application again. Now when I return to the home screen, you can see the Safari icon has reappeared. iPhone will deliver stock quotes right to your device. Out of the box, iPhone comes with three main markets, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and S&P 500. It also comes with three companies by default, Apple, Google, and Yahoo. By tapping on any of the companies or markets, the chart below will update based on your selection. Tapping on any of the time intervals above the chart will adjust the data to reflect your selection. The chart below can also display a company stock summary and headlines when you scroll through it. By selecting the Yahoo icon in the bottom left corner, iPhone will automatically launch the company's Yahoo Finance summary page. Using the home button to multitask makes it easy to switch between the two. In the bottom right is the information button. By clicking this option, you have the ability to add and remove other companies and markets. Here I'm adding Bank of America Corporation. Once you've finished, press done to save your changes and the device will automatically begin to collect stock quotes and data when available.